Oh little green creatures Oh library books with wings Oh elephant shadow Oh jellyfish in my bruise Oh floating fog of tomorrow Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and welcome to BCNC's Light the Way event. I'm Eugene Marr, BCNC board president. We're so glad to have you joining us this evening to learn more about BCNC and how you can take action to support Asian and new immigrant families. As many of you know, BCNC has been a vital presence in greater Boston and beyond for over 50 years. A lot has happened over the past year that has been unprecedented because of COVID-19. And certainly this has been a difficult and challenging time for us all. But if I may, I ask you to imagine facing those challenges, virtual learning, employment uncertainties, even registering to vote if you are a new immigrant, an English language learner, or a working parent who recently lost their job. Through these turbulent times, BCNC has been a beacon for many. Tonight, we will be meeting a few of our participants to listen to their inspiring stories about how BCNC has impacted their lives. Please know that you will have the opportunity tonight to give to help light the way for immigrant families. Your gift would, will be put to immediate use towards critical services to help families in this time of need. With that, let me introduce our first BCNC parent, Allie, to share her remarkable story of how she found BCNC and what BCNC has done to help her thrive in our community. Allie? Hello, good evening. My name is Ali. I am a level one student at BCNC. I come to the United States a year ago from Guangzhou, China with my 15 year old daughter and a seven year old son. Before coming, I was worried about making a living because I didn't know any English. I decided to come so that my children could study in America. I heard about BCNC for the international student who I said next to um, my life from China to Boston. And the morning of my second day in America, I worked for 45 minutes to find the BCNC and registered for English classes. Since then, my life changed. After one year, I can use basic English speak in front of other people. And I even found a job for the first time. I felt like even in the United States, it's not difficult. Teachers and the volunteers at BCNC are very patient in teaching English and about American life during the pandemic. They called and emailed to see if we are safe, have an influx full, or need any help. I will never forget how they helped me as an immigrant. Thank you for your support. Because of you, I am more confident about my future. Because of you, I am learning and going. Because of you, many other new immigrants have better lives in America. Because of you, each student here has a chance to pursue their dreams. 
I believe that as long as we work hard, we can all achieve our dreams and goals. And the best way to show them we are thankful is to use what we learn to help more people. I am just one of the students helped by BCNC. Let's support BCNC to help even more people because one day BCNC may help someone you will be better and stronger. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Allie, thank you so much for sharing your story of hope and perseverance. I say yes to being stronger together. To all of you watching tonight, you have the power to uplift and change the course of another immigrant student's life. $1,000 pays for the additional expenses for an immigrant student like Allie to receive a full year of English and workforce skills classes. Tonight, we have been given a challenge. If we raise $40,000, generous donors will match that amount and give another 40,000. If you feel so moved, you can make a gift at bcnc.net backslash light the way. And tonight, your gift will have double the impact on a family like Allie's. Now I have the pleasure of introducing BCNC Ambassador, Liz Cheng, who is General Manager of Television at GBH and World Channel. Liz? Thank you, Jean. And thank you, Ali, for sharing your inspiring story. The impact that COVID-19 has had on our community has been devastating. Since the pandemic began, BCNC has received four times the number of referrals for emergency cases. Across the community, Asian immigrants are seeking help for food, for rent, for abnormally high levels of family conflict and stress. Nearly 25% of Asian Americans are unemployed, or, I'm sorry, are employed in the restaurant, retail, and personal service industries. As you know, our community was hit harder than others as far back as January when people stopped going to Chinatown due to the fear of getting COVID-19 irrationally. In Chinatown this summer, unemployment reached above 40%. That's right, above 40%, as families continue to struggle due to job loss or reduced hours. It's more important than ever for BCNC to light the way for children, youth, and families, and to create pathways to brighter futures. Now I'd like to welcome Wen Thang, a BCNC parent, to learn about the impact the pandemic has had on her family. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Wen Thang. I immigrated from China eight years ago. Well, my husband has only immigrated to the United States for two years. We had two sons, one who is one year old and one who is three years old. A year ago, I was referred to BCNC by our daughter at Taft Medical Center after my older son was diagnosed with autism. At that time, I was very sad. I did not know what I need, but the BCNC staff were welcoming and friendly. They helped me navigate available resources for my son and I. BCNC provide one-on-one one -on -one therapy sessions for my son and educate me and my family on my son's special needs. We were invited to participate in special arts and our therapy program. My son didn't speak at all, but through this program, we learned how to communicate with him through various art forms. For example, I know he likes, he likes drawing and coloring from the art program. When the pandemic hit, my husband who worked at the restaurant had his hours reduced to part-time and I only had a part-time job. It was and still is a tough time, but BCNC is helping us through it. 
BCNC gives me and other parents like me emotional support, parenting skills, information for social service resources, and even financial support. Now, my three-year-old son is beginning to speak, and this gives me great joy. My dream is that my children grow up happy and healthy. With BCNC's help, I can see a brighter future for my family and myself. Thank you so much, BCNC. Wen Fang, thank you so much for sharing your story about the help that BCNC has given your family. Just very, very effective. Um, and essentially, um, we have been talking tonight about all the different um, aspects of what BCNC can do to be helpful. Um, and that, um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find my place here, to respond to the increased needs in our community for Ali, Wen Fang, and families like theirs, you can make a critical difference and by providing critical services. $1,000 for eight weeks of one-on-one -on -one counseling services for a family, $500 for a parent to attend a parent support group, $250 for additional resources and services for a family with children with special needs like Wen Fang. Tonight, it's easy to light the way and make a big impact. The challenge is on. If we raise $40,000, a generous, generous donors will match each dollar to raise an additional 40,000. Your donation will be doubled. Make a gift now and BCNC at bcnc.net backslash light the way to help reach our goal. Now I'd like to introduce Sarah, who will share, us, share with us while she and her family trust BCNC to care for and educate their child. Please welcome Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a BCNC parent. Our almost three-year-old son, Miles, attends BCNC's Center for Early Education and Care. My husband, Eric, and I are both educators at the Josiah Quincy Elementary School, the local public school in Chinatown. We knew about BCNC long before Miles was born. From friends, colleagues, and family at the Quincy School, we knew about the strength of programming at Acorn and at Red Coke. And we've been so happy with having Miles at the Acorn and seeing how he has thrived. Acorn was important to us due, important to, us due to the strength of its programming, its accreditation by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and for the opportunity for Miles to learn about his cultural heritage. My husband, Eric, is Chinese, and we speak Cantonese at home. Well, Eric speaks Cantonese at home. And it's been a really wonderful opportunity to have Miles learn in a setting where Cantonese is being spoken and he has the opportunity to learn and speak the language as well. As educators, we understand the hard work of early childhood education. And we've consistently been impressed with the care and nuance and knowledge that the teachers at ACORN bring to their practice every single day. When the pandemic hit, we also saw how hard it was for educators and experienced it ourselves to adapt to the changing learning environment and the changing needs. When the pandemic first hit, we were so impressed with how BCNC sprang into action, providing information, resources, and direct aid to all aspects of the community. When they reopened their doors in the summer at ACORN, we continued to be impressed with how the educators thoughtfully and caringly transformed the learning space, incorporated PPE, and still provided Miles and his classmates opportunities to learn and thrive and socialize with one another. Miles has loved being back at school. It means so much to him and it's meant so much to us. Not only has Miles had the opportunity to continue to learn, but it's provided us with opportunities to continue to work as well. Due to the complex matrix of work expectations and childcare needs and childcare costs, without ACORN, I would have had to stop working this fall. And so it, it means so much to our family to have been able to continue working, to continue to do what we love and to see Miles continue to learn and thrive. Our dream for Miles is that he grows up to be a compassionate member of his community. And we truly see every day how he's learning those skills at ACORN. BNC, BCNC is important to the community because it empowers its members to meet their needs and to learn and grow in their each and individual ways. And we'll forever be grateful to be part of this community. Thank you.
Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and letting us take care of your son, Miles. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining and supporting us tonight. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for sharing your experience and letting us take care of your son, Miles. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for supporting and joining us this evening. My name is Ben Hires, and I have the privilege and honor of being the CEO of BCNC. I also have the honor of being a parent of a young son. And thanks to my wife, who's an immigrant and her family, he's being brought up bilingual. So I know how important culturally appropriate dual language childcare is to families. I'm also very proud about how our staff have worked so hard to make BCNC safe for families like Sarah and her son, Miles, so that working parents have a peace of mind that their child is in a safe environment to learn. Our team has gone above and beyond, um, but it comes with increased costs. It costs an additional $500, $500 per child per month to buy PPE, to do the extra cleaning, and also to buy individual tables and learning materials so that the students can stay socially distanced. So I wanna ask you tonight to help us defray those costs so we can help families and continue to make uh, our children safe. So please open up your browser, grab your phone and go to bcnc.net backslash light the way to make a gift that might be meaningful to you and your family. I wanna thank two amazing generous donors uh, this evening for offering the $40,000 match. So whether you give $5, $500 or $5,000 even, your match is gonna be doubled. That's a great return on your investment in BCNC. And I actually wanna challenge everyone here tonight to see if we can actually get somebody to donate $10,000 as another match on top of the 40,000. So that if we reach $50,000 tonight, we'll make our goal for the Light the Way campaign to reach $100,000. And I think we're gonna do it because tonight I'm gonna to make my gift after, after this event and I hope you'll join us. So one of the other unfortunate things about COVID-19 in terms of the public health uh, issues that have faced our community, there's also something else that's not new that's been magnified by the virus. And that's been the anti-Asian racism and xenophobia. And like many of you, I'm sure you have a vision for a just and equitable society uh, for all Asians and for all communities of color. But sometimes it just doesn't seem like, how are we gonna get to that vision? But I'm inspired by the next generation. I'm inspired by the young people that are part of BCNC. And I'm also uh, inspired specifically by a young woman named Mandy Sun, who worked with other students in Boston, Quincy and Malden. And they wrote to their uh, public school teachers and educators and leaders and asked them to take a stand against anti-Asian racism. And so Mandy's not only writing letters to public officials, uh, learning remotely these days, and helping organize other students. Um, she's being interviewed by the Boston Globe and GBH Radio. I heard that this week she finished up her college applications. So I wanna extend a sincere thanks for her to take the time um, this evening to speak to all of us on a school night. Um, so I'll hand it over to Mandy now. Thank you. Hi all. My name is Mandy Sun and I'm currently a senior at Boston Island School. BCNC has always been a part of my life. I grew up in Chinatown in Quincy, and I went to Josiah Quincy Elementary and Upper School. And BCNC was a community center I went to as a kid. My brother and I went to the after school program, program and we would do our homework while my parents were at work. My favorite part of those sessions was the snacks of Pringles or granola bars that they gave us on the side. This summer, my friend Sarah recruited me to participate in the youth center projects. With other youth from Boston, Quincy and Malden, we came together to take action against the anti-Asian racism we were experiencing. I never realized the extent of racism and oppression against Asian Americans until COVID-19 brought extreme anti-Chinese and anti-Asian rhetoric. As I watched videos of physical and verbal violence towards Asians, I was scared. My little journey to the CVS store would be a scary trek. My social media was frankly shocking as well as I saw young people defending the use of the phrase Chinese virus. Even my parents who've been here for over 20 years felt rejected by this country and fearful that a stranger would be physically violent towards them. With the support of BCNC, 
we wrote an open letter urging our school leaders to address the anti-Asian racism that was prevalent during COVID. I didn't understand how impactful this whole experience was until the letter, which now has over 320 signatures, received press coverage and the attention of school leaders, even my own principal. I'm so thankful that BCNC has given me a voice to express my own concerns and worries. They have empowered me to be a leader and activist. Because of this experience, I hope to continue working within my community on these efforts and perhaps create change through my future profession, whether that be in public service, law, or education. BCNC is an amazing organization to support because they, in turn, support people like me. They empower young people and guide them to a clearer future, vision of their future or direction. So thank you. Thank you, Mandy. You truly are leading the way and inspiring us. And like I said, you're definitely an inspiration to me as well as all of your other colleagues in the school. So um, I wanna thank everybody tonight for being here. I wanna thank Liz, Eugene, and all of our board members and speakers um, and all of our hardworking staff. They really are the ones who are making this happen and supporting the community. And um, least but, uh, last but not least, all of you for being here with us tonight. Um, hold on a sec, I'm getting a chat here. I'm getting a message, wow. This is amazing. Okay, so I made that challenge earlier when I was last speaking to see if someone would make a $10,000 challenge match um, so that we could get to our 100,000 goal tonight. And somebody has stepped up and I wanna thank that person out there. I don't know if they're anonymous or not, but amazing. So, so we have a $50,000 uh, matching gift. So if we raise, um, if we get to $50,000 tonight, that, that 50,000 is gonna be doubled and we're gonna reach our goal of $100,000 for this campaign. So that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, again, thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you to Liz, Eugene, um, Wen Fang, Ali, um, Mandy, um, and all of you. So this is amazing. We continue to do all the hard work um, supporting our community and um, thank you for believing in us and, and being a part of this. So um, if you haven't made your gift tonight, please, um, help us out, light the way for a brighter future for our community. And uh, I hope all of you have a wonderful evening and a, and a great Halloween weekend. Be safe out there. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Jellyfish.